just a few moments, we get to see what Will Greer and the rest of this offense will look like. And in addition, all of the new faces on defense. That's coming up in just a few moments. Stay with us right here on Mountaineer Game Day. And as we rejoin the broadcast, the pep band is starting to play our nation's national anthem. Let's go ahead and take a listen. That sets the stage. We're about to have the coin toss and then kickoff for the WVU Gold Blue game coming up right after one last break. Everybody get inside! Everybody get inside! Everybody get inside! 
Final evaluation period for West Virginia University football student athletes is today. So get warmed up, put your game face on, and hey, let's have some fun while we're at it. It's spring football. The annual Gold Blue game is next. This is a special Gold and Blue edition of Mountaineer Game Day. Mountaineer Game Day starts now. And welcome into our sideline booth that we've set up for today's game. Jeff Coyle with Dale Wolfley. You know, we're going to be broadcasting the 15th of 15 spring practices today. One last chance for evaluation of the players on the field and the job that their coaches have done, getting them ready for the 2017 football season. Dale, a lot of excitement out there. What are the coaches looking to see today? Well, what the coaches are looking for, first off, is how are we going to replace? Who's going to step up? That's replace eight defensive starters, seven offensive uh, starters. So we have a, a bunch of young guys returning. Uh, we got some nice, real good, talented veterans. But who's going to step up today? It's a big deal. And you know what? There's nothing like spring game because this is your last opportunity for those coaches to look at you, place you where you're going to be heading in the summer, and then finally into the fall ball. And Dana Holgerson said that, you know, we're not going to have captains pick teams. We're going to have offense against defense, gold against blue. So let's take a look at what the scoring is today because it's a little different from a typical game. Of course, if either side of the ball scores a touchdown, you get those six points. A field goal is three, two-point conversion is two, and an extra point is one. That all makes sense. We see that during the regular season. On defense, though, this is how the blue will get points. A three and out gets five points. A drive stop will be three. A fumble recovery three and an interception exception three so you see the importance placed there on stopping the drive and on forcing turnovers that's what West Virginia's defense will be looking to accomplish today out on the field and Dale you know we just get an idea that for some of these players who maybe at this point we don't have them on our two deep when we look at a depth chart this is their chance to step out and to make a name for themselves again what they want to do is they want to get noticed by the coaches first of all they, all, they also want to say like hey you know what I got to do this I got to stand up it's my time all those guys that graduated last, last year there was 22 seniors including Sheldon Gibson and there's a whole room a whole bunch of room ready to step up so we go ahead and take a look at the keys to the game for this one. Well, Dale, take it away here. <laughs> okay. Well, let's get to the automatic. you got to work on your technique and fundamentals as a player. Uh, it's got to become fundamental. You can't be thinking about it. If you think you're slow, you're not reacting as you should. Secondly, you have to make most of your opportunity to play. I, I said it before, you have X amount of plays today to make an impact. You're in front of a crowd. What kind of person or what, what do you play with your poise or not in front of a crowd it's big deal have fun and play with passion is a third one Jeff and you know what you don't want to have any regrets again if you start thinking too much just just go out and play man be a wild man get nuts <laughs> Be a wild man. That's something Dale Wolfley can do very well. We'll see how many of the WVU football Mountaineers can do just the same. We've got the coin toss and kickoff coming up right after this. Go 
Dog on me, dog on three, one, two, three. Hey, one kickoff right here, one kickoff. Yeah. Moments away from kickoff of the WVU Gold Blue game here in Morgantown. For one last final thought from the sideline, let's head down to Amanda Mazie. Yeah, you know, so many storylines to watch today. Eight defensive starters lost from last year's squad, including all three starting defensive linemen. Three of WVU's top four corners are gone. But you know what? What really everybody's going to be watching is the arrival of Will Greer, the transfer from Florida. He is finally getting his shot on the gridiron for the Mountaineers. But with his arrival also brings the arrival of Jake Spavlo. Of course, no new faces to the Mountaineer, but this is his first time he'll be actually calling the plays, taking that away from Dana. So you have Jake and you have Will both together new this year. So that, of course, is going to be one storyline that coaches and fans will be watching this game. Jeff? All right, thanks a lot, Amanda. So we are counting down the seconds for kickoff. You see there a quarterback of the past in Geno Smith standing just a few paces behind the quarterback of the future for West Virginia. Heck, the quarterback of the present, Will Greer, suiting up, strapping on that helmet, getting ready for his first action in front of the fans. You know, this team, this team has had scrimmages so far this fall or this spring, but this will be the first time that fans are in the stands keeping an eye on their every move. John Young is lining up now to kick off the gold blue game for the 2017 edition of this WVU football team. And that's Gary Jennings on the return. You can see he didn't have any blockers in front of him. So Dale, we get We're, immediately we get an idea of how this one's going to play out. Yeah, Gary Jennings, and we gotta remember we have to replace Shelton Gibson who averaged 21.2 yards for return last year. So that's a big deal. That's something that they're gonna be have to work on through the summer and fall camp. This is exciting. John Young has a powerful leg, so it was nice to see him kick off. He redshirted last year, but he did travel with the team. And last year we saw what Mike Molina was able to do as far as field goal kicking was concerned. They like what John Young can do on kickoffs, so you will see a different player at each of the three kicking positions. But now our first chance to see Will Greer lined up in shotgun, a handoff on his first play, and that is Justin Crawford taking it to the outside, gaining about four yards, his first carry in a gold blue game. Justin Crawford running right in the outside zone there. It's Will Greer. They're getting the line up. I tell you what, it's going to be a fast, fast, fast. Hurry, hurry, they're starting out with. That is the name of the game for Jake Spavitol, the new offensive coordinator for West Virginia. Now play fake. Greer back in the pocket. No pressure. Able to complete his pass down the left sideline. That's Gary Jennings on the receiving end. That's one of his favorite targets so far this Springdale. Yeah, Will Greer actually, in his redshirt freshman year floor, averaged 65 percent completion percentage. We have we got doubles to the right, 20 personnel. Another handoff to Crawford. Crawford, a guy who last year got in because of injuries to Russell oh, Shell. We knew what to expect from him. He eclipsed 1,000 yards in his first season for, for West Virginia. Yeah, last year he had two games, 331 yards against Oklahoma and 209 against Baylor. Uh, pretty resourceful, pretty explosive. One of the big keys, they said, we want to see him get into the end zone more often. All the yards, let's see you cross that goal line. Now pass out to the left, and that is David Sills, a familiar name to WVU football players. 
look at Will Greer. Watch this release right here. He gets the ball out of his hands. Go ahead, roll it. Come out. Look at that quick release. That is big time. That's exactly what Jake Spavital has talked about. This guy makes the decisions immediately. He goes with his gut, and he sees what is out there available to him and just found David Sills, who's back in a WVU uniform for the first time since the Cactus Bowl a couple of years ago. Hand off to Crawford. Crawford making a few misses. and he is all alone. Just a few would-be tacklers. He's got the blocks and the first touchdown of the 2017 season. Justin Crawford taking it to pay dirt. Well, that's it. What did we want to see Justin Crawford do last year in those big runs? Take it to the house, Jeff. And that is exactly what he's doing. Let's, let's take a look at the replay coming up. Justin Crawford starting out with the outside zone. He takes it. Who does he make? He makes the guy break his ankles in the open field. It's hard to bring this man down. I'm telling you, he is on another level. This spring has showed it. He's very excited heading into the 2017 season. And how about that from Will Greer? He sees him make the first man miss, and he puts up one finger. He knows Justin Crawford has the speed to get past that second line of defenders. So there we go, right off the bat, a score on the first drive, 7 to nothing, gold with the lead over blue on a Justin Crawford touchdown run. More of the gold blue game coming up right after this. after a 51-yard touchdown rush for the Mountaineers. That puts the gold team up seven to nothing. And now a new kickoff specialist for West Virginia, Evan Staley from Romney, West Virginia, setting the stage for the Mountaineers on this drive. So, you know, Dale, you see there that the return men are able to just take it and that's one of the most dangerous plays in all of football is kickoffs. You don't want to get anybody hurt, so it's no need to. It's ball. Yeah. Not a reason to. We know that we got, we're going to have 10 screaming guys running down the field, so uh, no need to do it today. So now we're going to take a look at West Virginia's second quarterback to get into the game, Chris Chuganoff. You know, a year ago, Chris had a couple of opportunities to get into games for West Virginia. He completed 40% of his passes, just 15 yards for WVU. So we will uh, see what is what he's capable of this year, his second year really getting on the field for West Virginia as the backup to Will Greer's. First pass goes out to the flats there to Javon Durant. 
WVU able to pick up a few yards on the right side of the field. Yeah, that's again, that screen pass, big part of Jake Spavital's offense, which we'll be talking about. But again, here we go with this hurry, hurry. A trip's Dale, left. No, you can't wait to get to the X's and O's oh. of Jake Spavital's offense. Pump fake from Chuganoff. He throws it high. No, the ball is caught there. That's Dominique Maiden for West Virginia. Let's take a quick replay look here. Right here, he does the fake. Okay, we're going to be talking about this later, but this is the RPO option, that run pass option we're going to be talking about with Spavadol. Chugging off again in shotgun. Takes the snap, handoff to Tevin Bush. Tevin Bush, one of the more exciting players in the recruiting class this year for West Virginia. So, hey, Dell, you know, you've talked about it, the RPO, run pass option. What does that mean here for West Virginia? Well, first, you got to look at the box. How many guys are in the box? Is it favorable for the run or for the pass? Then you got to look at the isolation. If you're going to go in the pass, where is the defender the farthest off? That's the isolation. And then you got to execute it to get your garbage plays going. Okay, that's garbage yards, man. Jake Spavadol loves it. Yeah, that was his quote to us the other day. I love cheap yardage. They will take it any way they can get it. And that puts a lot of, uh, and not pressure, but a lot of responsibility on the shoulder of the quarterback to make that read. Absolutely. Last year with Kale, Davis by the third, they had over 1,000 yards of what he calls garbage yards. Chugging off with Tevin Bush to his left. Takes the snap. Looks right. Hits Javon Durant again. Durant wrapped up and tackled where he makes the catch by Sean Mahone. So look at Dana Holgerson here behind the quarterback, behind the offense. But this is a man who has designated the play calling responsibilities to his offensive coordinator. And we have seen a major change from him this spring. He's liking it. Yes. I think, you know, he, I'm not going to say he's mellowing out because he's not, but I'll tell you what, he is evolutioning into that coach that you've seen so many times as look at uh, Jeff Gundy from Oklahoma State. So he is accepting it. He's enjoying it. He has total faith in Jake Spavital. As you see, Kenny right there uh, from the University High Kid he, with the punt. And you know what? He averaged about 41.7 yards per punt last year. He had a really good uh, year last year. All right, let's take a look. At Dana Holgerson and his record a year ago, 10 wins for the first time in Big 12 Conference play. The most wins that they had in league play, just 7-2 and two last season. So a team that certainly turned the corner, showed that it could compete in the Big 12 in a way that shows the progress that he has made as a head coach since he came to Morgantown. I couldn't agree more. And when you added Tony Gibson as defensive coordinator and Jake Spavadon right now, he has total faith in his coordinators again. Once again, he's showing that evolution and turning into that head coach. So you see the blue team now getting on the scoreboard after a three and out. That gets them three points. There's a drive stop for the blue team. So now it is seven to three, gold leading the blue. As we get our second look at Will Greer, well, it'll have to wait just a moment, a pre-snap penalty. We're seeing a lot of trips going on here with 10 personnel. That's one running back, four wide receivers. You can see a bit of that. Also, they're going to do a lot of 20 personnel with a fullback and a tailback and three wide receivers. You're going to see a lot of that today. Nice first down. So we have a false start called on Colton McKivitz, the right tackle for West Virginia, a guy who uh, the coaching staff is certainly thrilled with coming into his second season on the field for the Mountaineers. Greer fakes the handoff. Now out to David Sills. Sills tackled there by Giovanni Stewart. How about David Sills coming back to West Virginia, a guy who wanted to pursue his passion of being a quarterback, so he left WVU, played one year at El Camino College, now back to the Mountaineers, and a guy that they are really excited to see what he can do when he is a full-time wide receiver. Well, you know, he realized that this was the best thing for him. I believe he has another level in him at this position. So I think it was a great move. And it's just wonderful to have him back. He has big hands for a big body. You're going to see him also outside today, but also you'll see him on the inside as well, Jeff. Yeah, and the first or the last time that we saw him was in the Cactus Bowl, as I mentioned, that one-point victory over Arizona State. He had big. a game-winning touchdown there. That's the last time he made a catch for West Virginia. And, you know, sometimes you got to do that. you got to follow your passion like he did with quarterback, realize my best chance to make an impact is going to be at the wide receiver position, and what better offense than to come back here to the Mountaineers. Absolutely. And that's always got to help a guy like Will Greer 
to know that he's got another quarterback in his arsenal. Now the handoff to Justin Crawford. Crawford wrestled to the ground by Hakeem Bailey, who is a cornerback that they're thrilled about. Okay, outside zone, student body right. Here we go, everybody's zone. You got a lead blocker with Elijah Wellman. Again, Elijah, redshirt senior. Uh, you just love that young man. He does everything you ask for him. West Virginia native. All right, so this man has quite a load on his plate this spring. Uh, Tony Gibson, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, replacing eight starters from a year ago, and that's the second straight year he's had to do such a thing. Boy, that's got to be tough uh, to, to see the, the sort of responsibility that Gibson has in finding, again, the next generation of Mountaineers. Absolutely. And there's nobody better than Tony Gibson, your Bruce Talls, your Matt Componis. They know how to coach. They're old-time, old-school coaches uh, delivering the old-school way. Play fake there. Fun. They hit Sills. Sills with some room to run. He'll try to set up some blockers, make a few players miss, and finally brought down at the 36-yard line as his helmet comes off. Uh, let's take a look at this ball fake freeze. Look, freezes the defense. There you go. David Sills coming in in the slant. Second look. Wow, look at the big man roll. He can run. He has long leg strides. Remember a couple years ago, Jeff, when he was the quarterback, he made some big runs in that spring game. In that spring game, yes. Everybody saw his athleticism on display there, and that's what ended up moving him away from under center and now to his current position of wide receiver. Giovanni Stewart again in on that last tackle for West Virginia's defense. There's another handoff. Justin Crawford met at the line of scrimmage and taken down by David Long, a player who... Tony Gibson says by the end of his career, he could have more tackles than anybody else in a WVU uniform. I remember David Long's high school film when we did the, the signing day show, and I was like, who is this young cat? Because he could absolutely play. He can move. He's elusive. He can block you up. He can shed you. He, he's got the whole package right now. He is top of the line for our linebacking core right now. Guy who didn't start at the beginning of last season, but moved his way into the starting role and certainly made an impact for yeah. WVU's defense. Sixth in tackles last year. This play blown dead. Nice pass and nice catch there from Gary Jennings, but everyone was aware the whistle was blowing before we got going. That one will be canceled out. Again, Will Greer looking at him, that release that he has. He, he's got high, high target rating. I mean, you know, he is really good. And... He's everything that they said he would be, but he's performed that. He's shown that this spring. I've been at every practice. You've been at most of them. And, you know, it's great to see. I'm not going to crowd him king yet. He's got to get a snap off before we can, we can do that. But I'll tell you what, Mountaineer Nation, get ready for some fun. I will tell you that in speaking with coaches and players, they have a hard time suppressing a, spot, a smile when they talk about the intangibles that he brings to the game. Here's a pass to David Sills. Looks like he's finding one of his favorite targets this afternoon at Mountaineer Field. Okay, let's take a look at the replay. Again, Will Greer firing off. He's out there. He's checking down here. He's looking. He doesn't go to the first receiver. <laughs> David Sills right there again. Big target. Absolutely. So we're closing in on the red zone here. Pass complete to Gary Jennings on the inside. Okay. Let's take a look at how quickly Will Greer makes that decision and gets rid of the ball. Again, decision, and then you got the arm to back it up. But if you notice, his footwork is perfect. He's angling right at him. He hits him right in stride. Greer just inside the red zone now. A handoff to Martel Petaway. Petaway tests the left side. Defense able to hold him to just about two yards there on the carry. Yeah, Martel Petaway, uh, he's got an exciting future ahead of him. I, I think you're going to see a lot of him going to be up the middle. He's obviously very fast. He was a sprinter. But at those sh uh, third and fourth down shorts, I think you're going to get a lot of Martel Petaway coming at you. A little bit of a bowling ball, Jeff. Absolutely. You saw it in the Iowa State game a year ago. And here he goes, breaking through tackles close to the goal line. Martel Petaway, the true sophomore for West Virginia, showing what he can do when counted on in WVU's backfield. We do have an injured player, which is, of course, the last thing that we wanted to say today in broadcasting this game. Let's take a look at this replay here, Martel. He's picking up his legs. Look at him run through those arm tackles. That's the thing. If you can get him spread the defense out, Jeff, you're trying to make that makes the defense have arm tackles, not tackling with your shoulder and squaring up. That's that's Greg Bosch. Kyle Bosch. This is not Kyle what Bosch. you want to see. 
Kyle starting at left guard right now, a career right guard, one of the most experienced players on the entire offense and, and really on the entire team, a leader for that front five. Yeah, that's what you don't want to see. Uh, a redshirt senior like Bosch, who you know can play, who was a, uh, a representative of the Big 12, all-star last year. Uh, I, I think probably, no matter what the injury is, he's pretty much going to take him out right now. Oh, yes. Wouldn't anticipate taking any chances. And this is always the chance that you do take, unfortunately, when you get in practice for football. There's always that chance for an injury. And right now to see Kyle Bosch, one of those guys that they have such high hopes for, this this fall difficult to see him still on the turf let's take a look back and see if we can see exactly what did happen here dale yeah sort of got tangled up with david long there so looks like a bit of a leg whip uh doesn't look too seriously and yeah well that's with, great to see walking with off the kyle field walking under. off right now you know that's a great sign and here's the, here's the good news Fall camp doesn't start for months, <laughs> three months. So time a to lot recover. of time to recover. So let's see who West Virginia will use to replace Tyler at this point. Uh, excuse me, Kyle. The offense back in the huddle right now. Mountaineers looks like they've brought Dale I can't see who is well, we got double list. formation 10 personnel right now okay it looks like they've moved Grant Lingafelter from right guard over to left, left guard I'm trying to make out who's ball in start here. number 72 offense five yard penalty remains first down Okay, that's Kelby Wickline that's come in at right so guard. So the answer. So this is what Coach Wickline was talking about, Jeff, being able to move the offensive lineman from right to left, to guard to tackle to center. Usually you're only going to see Matt Jones and Ray Rollerson who stays at center at this point. Everybody else, uh, movable pieces. You have doubles again, 10 personnel. Back to David Sills tackled. They're just shy of the five-yard line. Now this is good because you're seeing a red zone. Red zone last year, uh, the offense was 48 to 57 for 81 percent scoring in the red zone. But in reality, the touchdowns, Jeff, they were 33 for 57 for 58 percent. That's what they got to get better, and that's what Spavadol really wants to improve from last year's team. West Virginia spread it out again. Trips right, Greer, and a fumble here. The defense oh. able to pounce on it. And that's a turnover inside the red zone. Okay, Jeff, this is spring ball, the spring ball, and you will see a, a bad exchange right here. Mm. You know that Jake Spavita, and I'm telling you, Dana Hed uh, Hogerson is not going to like this, not whatsoever. Any turnovers, you do not want to have it. And so the defense gets on the board again there because of the turnover. West Virginia now in the gold blue game gold with a lead seven to six. And what a name that was who pounced on the ball. Derek Pitts, one of the highest recruited athletes for the Mountaineers this year and the number one player in the entire state of West Virginia, according to the recruiting services. Well, if you look at the defense and offense, you're going to see a lot of West Virginia young men on this yes. team really coming around strong the last few years. I really, really like it, Jeff. So they're going to have Chris Chuganoff take over at the point of the fumble recovery. He hands it off to Tevin Bush. Bush gains a couple there. Well, the nice thing about Tevin Bush is you have all these six foot five, six foot six <laughs> offensive linemen, and then all of a sudden there's a guy who's a foot shorter, five foot six, Tevin Bush, and he's so fast that by the time you actually find him in the pile, he's gone. Yeah. He's already in the second level. They make jokes about that sort of thing but it's true with him they find him 20 yards downfield quite often when they think he's lost in the backfield 20 personnel again twins right play action fake down the middle great grab from javon durant just barely tangled up there or he could have gone the distance And that will be the end of the first quarter of action. The gold team leading blue 7-6. to six. 
So Dana Holgerson coming over to join Amanda Maisie right now. We'll see his thoughts on this first quarter of action. Let's send it to the field with Amanda and the head coach. All right, coach, well, first of all, your thoughts, specifically Will Greer seeing him out here today. Oh, he looks good. Um, you know, I've watched him for five weeks now, right? So I kind of know what to expect when it comes to him. Uh, uh, he looks good. You know, he's poised back there. Uh, the one thing I've been talking to him about is we got to do a better job of finishing drives. And, you know, bad exchange between him and him and uh, Petaway. Put the ball on the ground. That can't happen. You okay? Like you're not jittery, not calling the plays or anything? No, I'm. I'm just. I'm a. I'm a referee at heart. You know. I mean, that's what I do now. Is I. I sit there and study situations, and I put myself in these referees' uh, shoes and trying to get to know them a little bit better. Maybe they'll treat me better on Saturday. It's always a good strategy. Thanks a lot, Coach. We'll check in with him in the second quarter. We'll be right back. Really an interesting strategy. We'll see how it plays out. Second quarter coming up right after this break. There's a look at some of the younger Mountaineer fans, maybe future WVU students, checking out the gold blue game. Kyle Bosch, the injured player for WVU, now sitting behind the team bench, getting checked out by athletic trainers. We go back to the action. It's Tevin Bush along the left side. Bush showing off that speed. So we're starting to get a look at the second string players. There's Brendan Ferns, a guy who missed his entire uh, freshman season due to a devastating injury. But now we're getting a look at these guys who are really pushing for starting positions and especially down the line for WV. Absolutely. I mean, you have Brendan Ferns. Uh, Coach Gibson was talking about how his knee was starting to loosen up. He's doing really well coming back from rehab. So that's something that's really positive. He's a very talented young man. Uh, and all these uh, second teamers, it, it's not a slight to them. These guys are just young. They have to make their mark, and they're going to make their mark. And this is one of the steps along the way. Well, how about Shane Commodore there on the tackle, a Morgantown native, of course, and a guy who's playing his final season here for West Virginia, had two interceptions in last year's Gold Blue game down at the Greenbrier. Yeah, he's very valuable. He can play a bunch of the safety spots. He's a redshirt senior. Uh, he plays a lot of special teams, so he's very valuable. Again, West Virginia young man, uh, right out of Morgantown High. Get big shouts and props for that. Of course, Dale Wolfley will give a big shout out to MHS. So many local players, as you mentioned, not just Morgantown, but all around the state of West Virginia as Chris Chuganoff is off target with his pass downfield. Alejandro Marenko in the area of that one. Well, let's start off right off the bat with that John Lewis, uh, Richard Senior defensive tackle. Uh, John is everything you could ever ask for uh, in a player that you come. He has done everything he has been asked to do. Uh, he's out of University High right here locally. And you, you love him, Jeff. I mean, that's the type of guy you want. He gives you everything he has on every play. 
John Lewis. He's also been the Mountaineer Award winner for in the weight room. He's been Iron Mountaineer. He's Big gotten leader. that Nikolic Award. So he's certainly a guy who the team puts a lot of responsibility on his shoulder. Now we see John Young lining up for the punt. Gets that one away, and it'll be Javon Durant calling a fair catch. And this really shows you how versatile and valuable that John Young is. Mm -hmm. And he had, does have a scholarship as a kicker, and he's also a punter. So he's going to give you a lot of opportunities, a little bit of versatility. You know, but right now, he's in a battle there with Billy Kinney out of University High as well. Another That's, West Virginia guy. That was the battle last year. And I think a lot of coaches even felt that John Young was going to be penciled in. But Billy Kinney showed that he was deserving of a start in the opener. And against Missouri, he showed he could keep it for the rest of the season. Absolutely. He averaged almost 42 yards, and he did drop 17 inside. 20. So after that last drive, the blue team ahead 12 to 7 as we take a look at the scoreboard. Again, trying to put numbers on each of the things that West Virginia's defense does well now gives them the lead. We have doubles going on there with 10 personnel, one running back. Greer tries to sail it out wide, goes too wide in a search for Gary Jennings out there in coverage was Toya Avery. Yeah, now again, we're seeing the same line that we saw before with Kelby Wickline coming in at right guard. Grant Lingerfelter, the redshirt senior at left guard. And look at big 73, Josh Sills out there, who for me has been the biggest surprise in the offense line, 6'6", 320. And you know, Coach Joe Wickline, who now is completely in charge of that offensive line as we see a pass from Will Greer inside to Gary Jennings on the tackle, Adam Hensley. Coach Wickline said of Josh Sills that he's a player who's really starting to come along and that he needed coaching when he came in, but he always asks, what can I do better? He's always searching for a way to improve his game, and you got to love that uh, as he goes out there at left tackle today. Absolutely. Now, again, with them moving the, all the offensive alignment around, you can find out who your best five, best six, best seven are. So Josh, he might actually end up playing a, a bunch of guard this year when Yadi Kajust, who was back on track with his rehab, uh, comes out in the fall. So we see the defense able to force a three and out here. You know, Dale, it's tough to keep up with this offense, how quickly they get set, how quickly they snap the ball. Last year at Cal, Jake Spavital was in charge of an offense that ran 118 plays. He said it was actually 126, but a few penalties were a called penalties, in count. Yeah. That was a record in FBS football. Uh, they can do that here at West Virginia as well as Bi Billy Kinney gets off the punt. That, that speed, the tempo that he brings to West Virginia. Let's go on down to the sideline. I hear that Amanda Mazey is joined now with a special guest. Yeah, this guy might be some uh, a familiar face to many Mountaineer fans. Of course, former Mountaineer quarterback Geno Smith, now with the Giants, still in New York, different team. How has that all transpired? And are you excited about your new team? I'm so excited. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for myself. Um, actually, you know, same stadium, same house, you know, just traded in the green for the blue. So uh, I'm really excited. I'm really honored to have this opportunity. And, uh, you know, it's all about taking the bull by the horns. And that's what I'm going to do. We start off on Monday, uh, meetings with the guys, and it's going to be fun. We know that you look better in blue than green, let's face it. <laughs> hey, real quickly, you were here when Jake Spavital was here the yes. first time. Tell me about that relationship, and what do you think, uh, you know, he'll bring to this program now? Well, Jake, is, uh, he's always been, you know, like a mentor to me, uh, you know, from the first day he came here. Uh, he's a really great coach, man. He's coached some of the better quarterbacks, you, you know, you've seen in college football. And um, he's going to do a lot of great things for this program. Um, he's dedicated. He loves the game. He's very intelligent. And he's going to help Will Greer out and, and Chugs. He's going to help those boys get to that next level. And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. All right, Gino, thank you so much for your time. And go Giants. We'll be rooting for you this year. Appreciate it. All right, Jeff, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Amanda and Gino. Good to see Gino coming back here to the alma mater. We Always good to see you, huh? Pass out to the left here. They're gonna, uh -oh. the defense pulled it away. I think the the play was blown dead prior to that. Yeah. So that will not count for Derek Pitts. I'm sure he's upset. Let's loose. look at this replay here and see what it is. Yeah, Chugs. Chugs has had a good spring this year. No, they'll say that his momentum um, was, was stopped. So I... No replay here in the gold blue game, so it's just gonna whatever's called on the field is what they're gonna go with. Dale. That was a Coach Hogerson call. He's saying no, it was not a fumble. Give my team more reps. <laughs> yes. Kevin Williams able to rip that one away. Errant pass there. 
Yeah, look, might have even been tipped, but again, they're going a lot of doubles here, Jeff. Uh, Ten personnel with one running back, spreading the two receivers out wide. You notice how wide those receivers are, those doubles. Uh, they're really spreading the field and making sure that you have to make a decision on a defense. Are you either going to cover the box or are you going to cover the field? And that, of course, is, runs into that RPO, that yeah. run-pass option. Plays right into it. It's just a mind game here between coaches. So the defense is going to add to its lead. The blue team now up 17 to seven after another three and out. John Young back there to punt the ball. Tevin Bush will field it. This one, a roller, and he'll let it continue to roll. All right, 626 left in the gold blue game. The blue team up 22 to seven. We'll be back with more action from Mountaineer Field right after this. Back here at Mountaineer Field for the Gold Blue game, you see our setup here. We're in the end zone. Uh, Dale prepared for the game with his spotting chart. I've got my own, but you can see the vantage point that we have, not your typical press box view. A uh, little bit different here, Dale, and gives us a different vantage point as we take a look at Martel Petaway busting off a first down run. All right, quick tip. Quick tip, well, let's take a look at this right here. Martel Petaway again uh, making some moves. He's got great eyesight, great vision down the field. Speaking of downfield vision, we see Will Greer unleash one as Gary Jennings gets up for that one. Boy, high, but when you got a guy as tall as Gary Jennings, you can throw that one. You know, that's really excellent. Gary, Gary Jennings is a big target. I look for him this year to really step up. It's his time. And he knows he's been waiting in the wings. He's, he's been outside, he's been inside. Now he is a short target for Will Greer, and he loves the way that his quarterback gets him the ball as Martel Petaway heads right up there on the inside for a few more yards for WVU's offense. Again, I want to talk about the offensive line, Jeff, is that they're, they're really coming together. They've had to replace a few guys, and Tyler Orlowski, T.O., the All-American, and also Adam Pankey, but also Tony Mateo when Yadi went down. So they're really coming together forming, but they are a big group, they are a tough group, and they're performing very well this spring. Greer going back to Gary Jennings. Not much on that one. Okay, so let's talk about Will Greer's ability to free read and how he gets the ball out there. When he makes a decision, Jeff, it's now he's going with it. And it's usually an accurate decision. And his ball is accurate to go with it because his fundamentals are superb. 
And you hear from Jake Spavitol, he says it's like having another coach out there, the way that he knows exactly what is expected on, of him on any given play. And he says, my quarterbacks are out there evaluating positions at the same time as I am. Sales that one a little bit high. Jenny's only able to get one hand on it. But he's making this evaluation. He knows this is what I can count on each guy for. And maybe they don't have a strong suit at one route, so he'll throw them another one. And let's think about it. When you're doing all these repetitions as fast as they're going to the temples, and you're making those defensive linemen, linebackers, and DBs run. They're getting tired. You're going to have to use a lot of defensive players against this offense. And right now it's fourth down. We'll see if West Virginia's offense is able to convert and keep the chains moving. Yeah, twins left. Sorry, trips left. Make that. And looks like the play clock ran out. We're going to get a delay on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Forecast. So think about that, Jeff, is that you're, you're going under what, 10, 15 seconds every play, and now you get a delay of game. It's a little, little bit, bit of a different tempo there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that you know, is the other thing, too. Jake did say, hey, if we are struggling to move the ball, we're going to slow it down. There's no point in getting our defense gassed, of course, here in a gold-blue game. That's a bit of a different situation. But in a regular season game, if they can't move the ball, what's the point in trying to not move the ball fast? Nanasso is a drive stopper. We should be updating the scoreboard is what we're getting to. It takes a while. You know, we're not used to the scoring system, so we'll see if the three points get added onto that goal or that blue score. But that is key. Going back to the original point of what Jacob's talking about, he said he will huddle if need be yes. to make sure that they're taking time off the clock to give the defense rest and not be exposed out there. Because, you know, there's a lot of Big 12 offenses that are tempo as well. Hurry, hurry. Absolutely. So let's take a look, speaking of scores, because Blue did get those three more points, now up 25-7. to seven. Offense scores just like it would in the regular season in a game that counts. The defense, though, you'll get the six points for the touchdowns, five points for a three and out. They just got a drive stop. That'll be three points. They've had a fumble recovery. Still looking for that interception would be another three points for West Virginia's defense. So the question is, do they call the dogs off? I don't think they would quite yet, right? <laughs> We're still in the first half. And I'm glad I'm not keeping score, Jeff, because it would be kind of screwed up right now, that's for sure. <laughs> It's a, I'm sure it's a very different beast that you're not just pressing the touchdown button. <laughs> so, Tevin Bush now. Also, he is running back, but I would look to see him, Jeff, next year in the fall. I would look to see him out there in the inside slot position because I think he can do a lot of damage out there. We've talked about big guys being the slots this year, but also there's still room for a, a fast, squirmy guy, De Tevin Bush, where he can make guys miss in the open field. Chugging off going downfield. That ball nearly picked off. I want that one As back. I believe it was Quandarius Qualls in coverage at the linebacker position, currently playing uh, on the Sam position for WVU's defense. Well, WQ as I call him. Qualls. Q, yeah. I'll tell you easier. what. He can come off the edge. He has a natural bend. Let's, and let's take a look at him as he comes in the replay here. Hey, you know what? That, that was a pretty nice break on the ball right there. Tough to see from that angle. Chugging off. Airs it out again. This time hits Javon Durant in the secondary. That'll move the chains. Well, uh, on this defense, you're, you're seeing a lot of cover three. Uh, Tony Gibson, defense corner, is playing a lot of vanilla coverage right now. And Sean, he'll be in the season, be changing it up so it's not so easy to read for the quarterbacks. Jake Long on that last tackle, airing it out here for Durant. Durant, he's speedy, but he can't quite catch up with that chugging off pass. In coverage there was Jake Long stride for stride with Durant on the route. Let's take a look at the lower corner of your screen, the separation that he has. He, Jake Long does a great job. This is a fine youngster at cornerback out of Ohio. He's going to be a redshirt freshman. He was stride for stride with Javon Durant. That's a good sign. And that cornerback group, brand new position coach again in Doug Belk. Third season in a row, they've had a new coach. And second season in a row, they're replacing two starting seniors. Uh, in fact, more than that, if you count Antonio Crawford and Maurice Fleming along with Rasul Douglas. So that is a young, inexperienced group of guys who are chomping at the bit to make their impact. Yeah, but as we talked with Coach Gibson this week, Jeff, he talked about it's the system. It's his system that they coach. Now, they may have individual techniques that are a little bit different, but it still is the same system. They still have to do the same jobs. 
And there's a look at Doug Belk as he's monitoring these cornerbacks. A graduate assistant at Alabama the last couple of years, now getting his own position for WVU as the pass goes out to Marinko. Nice catch in traffic for the receiver for West Virginia out of Riverside City College. It looks like they're actually going to call it. They're going to they're say he didn't make this catch, it looks like. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's take a look, take a look at this catch right here. I think he trapped it, Dale? Mm, uh, that's tough. Tough at this angle to see that for sure. He certainly... Hanging around the officials, Marenko is yeah. trying to get them to count it as a completion, but they'll go with incomplete. Let's take a look one more time. Looked like a great grab there, but the call on the field. Uh, I'm saying that hit the ground. Yeah. Ball bounced around as it made contact with the turf. Good call. <laughs> Marinko thinks it was right, but... Hey, but you have to be an actor. Absolutely. You have to try. you got to have confidence in yourself. Putt from John Young here. And a fair catch from Javon Durant. So that'll be another three points for the blue team. Now dominating gold, 28-7. That offense came out on fire. 51-yard run from Justin Crawford. Not much since. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this 2016 team was able to do on the way to a 10-3 record. The schedule from a year ago, the opener against Missouri. A year from September 3rd, we get back out onto the field at uh, the home of the Washington Redskins Landover Field to see West Virginia take on Virginia Tech. But, you know, this team got off to a strong start, and because of that, oh, they yeah. got into the top 25 poll, and they just stayed there all throughout the season. Well, I'll tell you what, circle that Oklahoma State game this year because that was a game I thought the Mountaineers let go. Yeah. Didn't think that they had to lose that game the way they did. Uh, kind of gave it away. Oklahoma State did a great job, but, again, I think that the Mountaineers could have flourished right there. Greer steps up in the pocket, throws it deep, makes uh, the connection to Ricky Rogers, and Rogers just shy, tackled by Shane Commodore there. What a job by Rogers. He almost danced his way into uh, the end zone. Good reference, Dale. Very good. I'll tell you, Ricky, he is, he is a graceful guy. Let's take a look at the replay here. But let's look at the play action by Will Greer, and then let's look at the release and the throw. It was right on target. He was in full stride. That is the Will Greer that we were talking about. That is why that is why the coaches are so excited about the opportunities for this fall. A great job for him to get out of the pocket. They keep the good blocking up front for him and for him to just unleash on that one. Let's take a look again. The way he put that ball out in space and Ricky Rogers ran under it and took it the rest of the way down near the goal line. If you noticed, they moved the quarterback out of the pocket. Oh. <laughs> That was a thing of beauty. And again, Ricky Rogers, very happy. He's had a very good spring. He is a tremendous dancer. He, that's his major. Uh, you know, I mean, he's a tremendous athlete. Just watch him. It's all, he's galloping almost down to the end zone. It was very good. The whole play was excellent. I, I love the play action. I love moving the quarterback out of the pocket, moving the pocket around so the defense lineman can't get a, a fix on him. And then again, he goes ahead and makes the perfect throw. In stride. So the goal team calls a timeout, and that'll set up first and goal from the three-yard line. Rodgers will stay in the game, split out wide right. WVU gets Elijah Wellman and Martel Petaway in the backfield right now. You got doubles right. Greer takes the snap, airs it out. David Sills broken up in the end zone. Great coverage by Elijah Battle, one of the seniors trying to take that cornerback position. And when you look at that cornerback position, you're thinking of Elijah Battle, you're thinking of Mike Daniels, and the newcomer, Hakeem Bailey, who is three for three. So it's, it's a great get. He's had a very good spring. And we also have some more guys that will be playing in the factory in the cornerback position coming in. Greer lining up on second and goal from the three, this time to Petaway. Petaway pushing the pile, and he's in for the touchdown. Gold team finally back into the end zone for the second time today. Petaway crosses the goal line, and it is now 28-13 to 13 blue. I would really like to see that offensive line pushing up front there. Again, that's a great job. 
you just take a look at the push up front. Let's Maybe it wasn't in. initially there, but they kept on keeping their feet moving, huh, Dale? Well, that's the thing. And you can see they're they're pushing. These are some big bodies going here. Martel Petaway, we talked about it with Jake Spavital. He said this is going to be his third, fourth down and short guy. I think he's going to see a lot of uh, carries for Martel in the red zone for the touchdown. There's the Hurricane native, Mike Molina, perfect on PATs a year ago. He tacks on the extra point. So the gold team now with 14 points, trailing the blue 28 to 14 right now. But that is a good sign for WVU's offense to get things moving again. All right, so we showed you what West Virginia's schedule looked like a year ago. Now let's look ahead to this year's slate. If you want to get tickets, well, you've got that opportunity, of course, go online to WVUGame.com or give them a call at 1-800-WVU-GAME. And Dale, you mentioned it, Oklahoma State, they're heading to Morgantown this year. Oh yeah, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm looking forward to that game. I, I think we got a little bit of payback to do for that, but hey, they're gonna be very competitive. They're still a fairly young team, uh, and they have a lot of talent out there. So that'll be a great game, but what I'm looking for, I'm not gonna lie, man. Virginia Tech Hokies Virginia Tech. opening game day. And if you want to get tickets for that, you can sign up at the West Virginia, the MAC, Mountain Athletic Club, because if you become a Mountain Athletic Club member, you can order tickets now for the Hokies. Because who doesn't want to beat down a Hokie? I tell you, there are a lot of people on that 2005 football team. The only loss of the year was to Virginia mm. Tech. That's the last time these two teams played. They'll be wishing they could get back out there and have a say in the outcome of that one. And if you missed it, that game was originally scheduled for Saturday, September 2nd. It's been pushed back one day. A primetime game. All eyes will be on WVU and Virginia Tech on Sunday, September 3rd. Jeff, I can remember the first time I ever hit a Hokie. That was 20-plus years ago. It still feels good, brother. Still, still to this day. <laughs> There's Karan White looking on from the sideline. Wish he could be suiting up today, but a season-ending injury a year ago, and they're certainly going to take care of him as he goes through that re rehab process. So hopefully we're going to get the chance to talk to Kevin White, you know, the Bears coming in. You know, I'll tell you, Karan, did you see that smile? Yeah. All the Whites got a smile. Oh, man. boy. Uh, there's some good-looking smiles going on there. Uh, this, the, they all look exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, of course, also coming off of a uh, season-ending injury. He had to have surgery during his second year with the Bears, trying to you know, shake that injury uh, reputation that he's got right now in the NFL it's and get make better. his impact on Chicago. It's got to get better because it's been, it's been bad. So it's going to get better for him. I, I believe in that. And a great young man, great inspiration, and a great positive person going forward. So here's Chris chugging off back in shotgun. Fakes the handoff to Bush, looks downfield, unloads, and finds his target. That's Drew Bowen, That's Drew number Bowen. 19. We've been yeah. told this is a guy who has to play he, this year. And he's going to be on that inside. Again, he's another big target, another West Virginia. Man, he's a great story. In fact, he was at Sports Center last year for that one-handed catch uh, in the yes. practice. Yeah, he's a guy Jake Spavital says, we don't have great depth at wide receiver. He has had a great spring. We need to see him on the field this fall. How about Tevin Bush? You lost him behind the offensive lineman, and <laughs> then you find him 15 yards later. All right, well, we talked about Kevin White. He joins us now with Amanda Mazie. Amanda. Hey, look who I found here on the sideline, of course. Former great y uh, receiver here for the Mountaineers, Kevin White. Now with the Chicago Bears. Kevin, first of all, we know that you've had some injuries with the Bears with your NFL playing career. How are you right now, and what's your timeline to get back? Um, I'm doing great. I'm right on the timeline. I um, really can't give a percentage, but I'm a lot better than I am yesterday. Um, and I should have the green light pretty soon to unleash me. But I'm um, looking forward to it, and I can't wait. What's it like being back here and seeing these guys and seeing the coaches? What do you think of this team so far? It's great. A lot of team, great quarterback, great receivers. Um, should go all the way. Um, miss the coaches. Uh, we've been catching up a lot. Uh, just reminiscing and bringing back good times. And uh, if I could come back and play, I would. <laughs> well, we might just have to bring you back. Well, good luck this season with the Bears, and we know that you'd like to come back here. We we'll welcome you back here anytime. Thank Thanks, Appreciate Kevin. It. Appreciate you joining us. Jeff, back to you. Thanks a lot, Amanda. I love the way that he phrases that unleash me he says I'll tell you in, what, in getting back on the field when he's unleashed he's unleashed uh, i'll tell you that cornerback from baylor will tell you about that so kevin white proudly wore number 11 in his time at west virginia you see number 11 chris chugging off there unable to handle a high snap and that backs up wvu's offense now third and 30 for west virginia in an effort to not give up more points to the blue team before halftime. That pass to Marenko underneath, not going to get the job done. That'll set up fourth down for West Virginia's goal team. Good job by Blue in the stop. 
You see they're really rotating a lot of defensive players right now, as you expect in a spring game. So the blue team will be adding three more points to their lead. And in fact, they've called halftime. We're going to go straight from the 26 seconds remaining to the break, and we're going to hear from the head coach as the blue team is up 31 to 14 on the goal. Amanda. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Dano, how would you assess your defense? Of course, a lot has been made that you've lost eight defensive starters, second year in a row. What are you seeing out of your defense so far this game that you like and maybe you got to work on? Oh, uh, it is. You know, this is Gibby's, what, fourth year? So two years ago, we lost eight starters, replaced them with some pretty good players that have been in the program. Last year, we lost eight starters, replaced them with a bunch of guys that have been in the program. Looks like the same defense to me. Uh, maybe a little bit more athletic. We've got some guys banged up that will be back uh, in, uh, in August, which will, be, uh, which will be good to get those guys back. Talk about you know what you're specifically looking for. Obviously, the first teamers, but this is a game that really the, the second guy, the second team, really needs to step up and impress you. Have you been impressed with some guys? A few of them. I've been unimpressed with a few guys too. I mean, that, you know, it, it's everybody's going to play. You know, but most of the starters are going to start taking their stuff off here, and then the second team guys get in there. On my punt, my punt team here, I got third team guys that are going to get in there for a little bit as well. So it's an opportunity for everybody to get in and. And uh, some guys rise their level up a little bit when they play in a setting like this. Some guys shut it down a little bit. So I'm always curious to see how those guys are going to respond. So you're saying I have a chance to get in too? You might. <laughs> all right. I'm not, I'm not getting in. I'm too old. But you can, get in, you can get in if you want to. All right. All right. Game on. All right. Thanks, Coach. We'll catch up with him after the third quarter. Jeff. Thanks a lot, Amanda. You can see a very relaxed head coach of the Mountaineers halftime of the Gold Blue game here in Morgantown. Second half action right after this break.
halftime of the Gold Blue game here at Mountaineer Field, Milan Pushkar Stadium. The fans coming out to get their first glimpse of the 2017 edition of the WVU football team. And so far, the blue team, the defensive side of the ball with the advantage, 31 to 14. Before this game got going, we got some of the annual awards during the offseason that showcase some of the best players for West Virginia and some of the best off seasons that they have had as far as the weight room is concerned. David Long, Elijah Wellman, and John Lewis, each recipients of the Iron Mountaineer. This voted on by their teammates. It's considered one of the top awards that you can get during the off season as players showcase what they can do in the weight room and as leaders both on and off the field. So you see a couple of West Virginia natives in there along with David Long. So that was the Iron Mountaineer. The other award, the Nikolich Award, goes to Nick Meadows, a former walk-on for West Virginia University, the long snapper, a West Virginia native for WVU. That's a look at some of the award winners for this spring of the WVU football team. When we come back, we'll take a look back at the first half, take a look at highlights of a live version of the Wolf's Den from Dale Wolfley right on the other side of this break. Stay with us more from the Gold Blue game in Morgantown. We're back at Mountaineer Field, halftime of the Gold Blue game for the West Virginia University football team, currently the Blue team with a 13 to 14 lead over Gold. Hey everybody, our sideline view here in the booth, Jeff Coyle with Dale Wolfley. We've been keeping an eye on the progress through this first half. Dale, you mentioned your keys prior to the game. What were your impressions of that first half of football? Well, the first thing is we all got to see Will Greer 
and what I saw was something pretty good. I liked everything. The whole package was there. He's his timing, his accuracy, and now let's go to the highlights. Yeah, so we wanted to well see right the there. Greater. Yes. It was the running game, though, by Justin Crawford, ripping off this 51-yarder. What did we say last year? Score, Justin, score! And that's and he what he did. did. He picked his legs up, broke some ankles on the defense. Great job. But again, here, hey, let's take a look at this push on the offensive line right here. That is a big push. That is north going south. And Martel Petaway, I said it before, a little bit of a bowling ball. Hard to tackle. He's square, powerful. Great job. And so now, now it's time to get ready for the third quarter. Let's get more highlights. Absolutely. We're, we're looking for more highlights from West Virginia on both sides of the ball. And hey, don't turn away because this half is going to go by quickly. We're going to have a running clock, no stoppages. So two 10-minute quarters. This is going to fly by as Evan Staley lines up to open up the second half. The Romney native with the kickoff. Von Durant gets under it, and that's where the offense, the gold team, will take the field, setting up shot for its first drive of the second half. Once again, a big job because we're going to have to replace Shelton Gibson, who did average 21 yards uh, a return last year and always was for the deep threat. So as we see Will Greer trotting out on the field, Dale, let's take a look back at your keys to this spring game before we got on air, what it was you were looking for and how West Virginia has done this so far. Well, I want to see them work in their technique and have fundamentals that were automatic, automatic in the spring. Make the most of your opportunity to play. You get X amount of chances to play in front of these coaches. This is where you're going to fall if you don't get noticed. And thirdly, of course, is, you know, you want to have fun and play with passion. And, and this is fun right here. Going out, throwing the ball. David Sills having a big first half. Now he opens up in a, a strong third quarter. Let's watch this. Let's watch a great quarterback that has the ability to throw. And let's look at David Sills, who was a big target with soft hands. And Dale, we should point out that there was defensive pass interference called on Hakeem Bailey. That penalty is declined. Results of the play, first down. And they actually called on Giovanni Stewart, but able to fight through it. David still still makes the catch. And that fake by Will Greer, all that happened for Will Greer because of that fake, and everybody bit on it. Here's Greer with the handoff now. Tevin Bush, the recipient of that carry, tests the right side of the line. Now let me, let's talk a little bit about Adam Schuler. He's big, he's long. Now this defensive line was the big question mark coming into the spring, but they've had a fantastic spring so far. They have about eight guys that they're repping throughout the whole defensive line. They like them all. They're long, they're athletic, uh, and they're doing a nice job. A little bit different from last year with those three defense linemen they graduated. Yeah, we consider that you know, a point of concern heading into the spring. They feel like they've answered it pretty well. Pass up top to David Sills. Initially looked like he had it, but couldn't haul it in. That's the first bad thing I've seen Sills do all day. <laughs> that wasn't that bad. That was actually pretty nice coverage. Looked like he had it and just tried yeah. to. If you nice look at that, from though, Bailey. he did go up to the highest point. That was nice. But Hakeem Bailey, who we talked about uh, as the junior college transfer, has done a great job this spring. He's fitting right into the Tony Gibson defense. Bailey was a junior college all region first team recipient. As he comes from Iowa Western Community College, had 40 tackles, five interceptions, and nine pass breakups last time he was out on the field. See an incomplete pass there. Mike Daniels in on that one. Another one of the seniors at the cornerback position who they're relying on for veteran leadership at this point in the spring. Absolutely, with, with Bailey, uh, Mike Daniels, and Elijah Battle, who is the most tested mm. battle <laughs> out there. So uh, right now we're in a pretty good situation, and we've got some young guys that are coming up. A battle with 11 games that he's played in, three starts in his career for West Virginia. Are we looking at a little bit of zero? Oh, well, there comes the cross. They the pressure. <laughs> Can't quite get to it. Gary Jennings down the sideline being guarded there by Tariq Pitts. Okay, so at the beginning of the game, both coordinators, Jake Spavital and Tony Gibson, were talking about you know, going vanilla, not drawing blood, but you know what? You draw some blood, you score some points, and all of a sudden, now here comes the zero blitz, here comes the bomb, taking shots. And that, of course, is part of Jake Spavital's offense as well, because on first down, he likes to take shots. There you see Tony Gibson, the Van native from Boone County, proud West Virginian in charge of WVU's defense, now in his fourth season as the defensive coordinator. 
Also been working with linebackers, spent the majority of his career as a safeties and defensive backs coach, then came to West Virginia and realized I've got to go up front and learn a little bit more about this defense as we see Chris Chuganoff now in the game for West Virginia at quarterback. He goes down the field to Javon Durant. That ball broken up. A couple of members of the secondary wishing that they had come down with that pass. Yeah. Not bad. He's making decisions. You know, Chugs, as I said before, he has had a good spring. Uh, he's done a nice job. Tough to have a Will Greer come in when you've already been here a couple of years and have to find out that you're right now you're number two. Now, Dan so Holgerson told me well. when, when Will Greer signed, he said, look, we're not going to stop recruiting. These guys know that if they want their position, they're going to fight for it no matter who we bring in. Pass out to Marenko right now and a great tackle from Kevin Williams. Yeah, let's look at this replay right here. Coming right at you. Right there. Bang. Nice tackle. You know, Tony Gibson talks about stepping on their toes and smelling their breath when you make a tackle. It keeps your eyes up. That was a pretty nice job by Kevin Williams. Nice to see that youngster flying around. Williams now with the spot on the sideline, checking out the action. Chugs looking downfield, going deep downfield. Can't quite catch up with it. Alejandro Marenko as Jordan Adams was in coverage. Jeff, do you remember what Jake Spavadal said? That he was just going to go very vanilla? Yes. <laughs> How many times have we seen already in the third shot. quarter? Deep shots. It's that competition between the two coordinators going on. Alejandro Marenko from River City College. It's the same school that sent Skylar Howard to West Virginia. Former WVU quarterback just finishing up his stint with the Mountaineers. Billy Kinney now on to punt. Tevin Bush back deep. Bush makes the fair catch. So we'll go ahead and step into a commercial break. The blue team up 37 to 14. We'll see if West Virginia's offense can get things going again and get back in the end zone on the other side of this break. An overwhelmed Mountaineer fan just can't handle the excitement here at the Gold Blue game in Morgantown as the Blue team has a 37 to 14 lead. I'm sure she'll wake back up for the fourth quarter of action as we head back down to the field. Will Greer back out there for West Virginia at the quarterback position. You'll have to excuse me there. That's not Will Greer out there. That's Chris Chuganoff. We are 
more than 100 yards away from that action, Dale. <laughs> Not the best vantage point to be able to see what's happening in the north end zone for WVU right now. You have twins right. Pass there. Sailed high for Marenko. That was actually a pretty nice uh, fake there by Chugs. I bit into it. You did. I all did. All the way over here. All the way over here. <laughs> And Dale, we talked earlier about the defensive line and the job that they've got in replacing three senior starters from a year ago, Noble Wachuku, Darian Howard, and Christian Brown. It's clear it's going to be a job by committee heading into mm -hmm. this fall. They are not going to rely so heavily on the starting three. They see a deep rotation, three at nose, about five at the ends right now that they feel comfortable with. Yeah, that's what it looks like it's heading into. And both Dana Holgerson and Tony Gibson feels very comfortable with that. That's a draw right there. Nice replay here. Nice run. Right here, I like that. A little bit open space. Got That's Jay Sean Banks right there. Banks in the backfield for West Virginia. I think we've seen all we ever got to get out of Justin Crawford, but that's yes. just a hunch. No, I, he hasn't been in for <laughs> about half of the game so far. John Young with the punts. This one will be a roller. Looks heading out of bounds. Tevin Bush won't mess with it. You know, Jeff, looking at these alumni that are walking by us right here, Noble Wachuku, uh, you got Harper. These these guys that are just graduating now, where you see Kevin White come back and Geno Smith. You know, Coach Hogerson, the staff, these guys really like them. And it, it's just verified by the fact that they are returning and they feel a part of Mountaineer Nation, being a part of the old gold and blue. It's pretty special and it's wonderful to see what's happening. And I'll tell you, it's special just to see so many guys who currently call the NFL home. I'm not sure what Shelton Gibson is dancing to right there out on the field, but uh, you can see there three really good wide receivers for West Virginia. We just had Dekeel Shorts and Shelton Gibson on the camera along with Kevin White. But these guys who are in the NFL have heard their name called in the draft when they come back to West Virginia. That's especially important for the young guys and for the recruits to see, hey, if I go to the Mountaineers, I could be playing in the league someday. Wide receiver you. Wide receiver you. Looking at the next generation of it today at the Gold Blue game in Morgantown. Just under a minute remaining in the third quarter. The blue team leading 44 to 14. Now we're looking at a new offensive line here. You got Ray Rollerson, Redshirt Jr. for the transfer to Tennessee at center. You got Jay Sean Sider at tackle. Chase Barron at left guard. Alex Schreiner just moved over from the defense line at right guard. And big Rob Dowdy there at right tackle. Very good young offensive linemen that are just growing into their position. And I thought it was worth mentioning that Joe Wickline said every day he's making calculated decisions as we see on the carry right there. Lorenzo Dorr testing the left side of the defense. Joe Wickline, the offensive coordinator, or the offensive line coach, said he's not an experimenter, but he makes calculated decisions, tries to get the best combination, right. best five, as we see Joe Wickline on camera right now. Then he makes a calculated decision based on possibility of injury, which we saw today earlier with Kyle Bosch's injury. That is the end of the third quarter right there. We're going to stay here. The other calculated decision he makes, lastly, is that the day that the competition leaves your room is the day that it goes flat. He always wants guys feeling like they have a chance at a starting position. Let's go ahead, Dale, and head down to the head coach standing by with Amanda Mays. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Dana, you have one more quarter here in the spring game. What are you looking for in this final quarter? To, uh, like, get some of these NFL guys some snaps here. Uh, It'd be much more interesting to put the camera on those guys and follow them around on the sidelines. I know you're, you've been over there uh, interviewing a few of those guys. It's fun. To Kevin get those said he's guys ready back. to play. Uh, he'd get out here and play. That's a dude that really loves football. So it's fun to get those guys back. You know, and uh, it's been a pretty good day. It was a great turnout. A lot of fans. You know, this is obviously uh, proceeds go to the Children's Hospital, so it's a it's a huge day for them. Uh, but big day for Mountaineer Nation, and uh, we got one more quarter. Uh, right now, there's no injuries. I know Bosch faked one over there, but he'll be fine. Um, so get get through uh, this last quarter without getting anybody hurt and uh, wrap it up and uh, and then uh, get out on the road and recruit a little bit. Sounds good. All right, we'll check in with you one more time after the fourth quarter. Dana, thanks a lot. Jeff, back to you. 
Thank you, Amanda. And great news. A faked injury from Kyle Bosch. So a senior who will be just fine. We'll come right back after this break with the final quarter of action from the Gold Blue Gate. And we're back for the final quarter of the Gold Blue game here in Morgantown at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Hey, check this out. You recognize this guy, Dale? Yeah, that's Maverick. And Maverick Stone. and Stone Wolfley, Dale's two sons currently on the football team, currently on the field, and we're hoping that we'll see Maverick line up Stone for a big, a big block up front. Yeah. Let's take a replay of this. I think that's a sack right here. Let's see if Maverick uh, actually hits somebody. Okay. That is your son making oh. a sack on well, the play. So we, we did not plan in. that. <laughs> that was not planned. I apologize to everybody out there who thinks I'm just uh, doing it. <laughs> that play was live. Play it was that. happening right after we talked about yep. it. They're stoned, making some moves. Ooh, breaking the double team. Not bad. That's the... That's the nice thing about Stone, though, is that he, Jeff, is he's made that transition from tight end to defensive line. He's six foot four. He's got a huge wingspan. Uh, that makes him fit right in with the other defensive linemen. Again, we have about eight defensive linemen that they're, they're pretty positive about. You know, they need to grow a little bit through the summer and some fall ball, but they're doing a good job. Stone, a wild man. Uh, you know what? He's tough. He's tough. I look at Maverick as more of a, uh, a skill, but we got to get him tougher because now he's moving from a tailback stage into a fullback. And, you know, just, I tell him, just look at Elijah Wellman. That's who you want to be in the next couple of years. And if you can do that, then you're well on your way to being successful because Elijah Wellman is a guy that I look at like uh, my brother Ronnie, one of the, mm -hmm. the great blockers of all time at WVU football for fullbacks. And you got Owen Schmidt. I just think Elijah's too smart to actually break a helmet on his forehead like <laughs> Schmitty did. Hey, worked out well for Schmidt to end up <laughs> in the NFL. Well. Now, of course, it's got Schmidt Saloon in Morgantown. And Maverick could be getting ready for senior exams in high school right now. Prom. Uh, it's He's getting ready for the prom. I'm telling you what, yeah. that that tuxedo is costing me a whole bunch. Look who is out here for West Virginia. Geno Smith is lining up at quarterback and Kevin White out wide. I believe even Shelton Gibson is in the game, although he's got his hood up. So I can't tell if that is him. Let's see what these I guys I bet Gino knows the play. Fakes the handoff. Gino Smith deep to Shelton Gibson. Gibson makes the catch and able to outrace the defense for the touchdown. WVU alumni taking advantage of their snaps out here on the field. Boy, it wouldn't be nice to see that combination for the Mountaineers one more time. Well, Jeff, how do we score this? 
Say that again? I said, how do we score this? Uh, I would think it goes to the gold team, right? You can see KJ, Dylan, and the rest of the crew wishing they had been out there. They would have something to say about it. Gino did the play action. Very good. Okay, I'm just telling you right now, Sean Mahone was not going 100%. I'm telling you, I'm doing this, I'm doing this for his parents. I, it, it appears to me that some players may have been told not to yes. go 100%. I'm, I'm trying to help Jake out Sean Long Mahone's was parents still right running, now. Yeah. Though. He ran to the ball. <laughs> he made sure that didn't show up on the tape as something that Tony Gibson would have an issue with. Yeah, see, the unfortunate thing about this, you can't have K.J. Dillon and Rasul Douglas and those guys go out there and lay out a big hit. It doesn't work quite no. the same way with the alumni on defense. Absolutely not. And guess what? The fans got a treat. <laughs> We got a treat. That was fun. That was fun. Now, you need to go out there and be an offensive lineman and block stone. No, I really would just love to go out there and be a defensive lineman and run into Maverick. Okay. <laughs> you so know, going say, after the younger this is, child. Say, this is Division One football. Be ready for it. Extra point tacked on. There's a gassed Shelton Gibson checking his social media. A little high stepping. A little high stepping. Uh-oh. They still got the, the same handshake left. That's pretty good. think these guys aren't having a fun time out here. Yeah, there's a signal caller down there taking pictures of it all like usual. <laughs> Jed Drenning. <laughs> Jed Drenning. Always keeping up on IMG. social media. <laughs> He's got to get his. <laughs> if it's not pictures of the football team, it's pictures of snow. <laughs> Well, all right, so we, we talked about K.J. Dillon not in on that last play, but he is joining our Amanda Maisie right now, former WVU Spur at the safety position. We'll send it to Amanda. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Yeah, K.J. Dillon down here having a lot of fun with some former alumni. You're now with the Houston Texans. One year of NFL under your belt. What was that like for you? Um, it was good while I was playing. I, I got injured um, halfway through the season, but I learned a lot while I was playing. I'm just ready for year two. What's it like being back here? I love it, man. I just I always call this place my second home. You know, anytime I get to come back, I always take advantage of it. I also read that uh, you bought a, a $13 salad, and uh, as a rookie, you got stuck with a $16,000 bill. That was a big welcome to the yeah. NFL, right, my friend? Oh, yeah, man. It was, you know, it just got to do it. You know, every rookie got to take care of dinner, so I had to take care of my, my buddies, you know, my, my vets. All right, what do you think of this team right now? Um, I, these guys, you know, got some work to do, but, you know, they got, I see a lot out there. You know, I, you see, I like the quarterback, you know, and I, and I always think the defense is going to be good. So, you know, I, so I, I don't really get to see much of the offense, but I do like the quarterback, and I do like what's going on on defense. All right, good luck. Well, good luck this year with the Texans. We'll be rooting for you. Right, thanks, thanks, KJ. Thank you. Jeff? All right, we'll take one more break and then get back for the final five minutes of the gold-blue game here in Morgantown at Milan Pushkar Stadium.
Welcome back to Milan Pushkar Stadium. Last 526 of this gold blue game as we wrap up the fourth quarter and our first look at the 2017 edition of the WVU football team. It's 44 to 21, the blue team with a commanding lead over the gold team. You know, looking at that play, Jeff, that, they actually line up in 12 personnel. That's one back, two tight ends, and two receivers. That's the first personnel look I've seen out of Spavadol today for that. Seen a lot of new faces out there. Just about every position, guys getting reps at the end of now 15 practices in this spring. A chance to see what the future of the program will look like after this year's seniors, juniors, uh, fill those starting positions. Yeah, let's look at number 93 here in blue, Ezekiel Rose, junior college transfer. Ezekiel has had a very, very good spring. He's been explosive. He's been the quarterback's face. He's been in the backfield all spring, given the offensive line fits. So look for Ezekiel Rose to have a prominent playing role coming up this fall. Nearly an intercepted pass right there by WVU's defense. Sean Mahone in on the coverage there. Another pass that's just gone in and out of a DB's hands. Yeah, now that you're getting into getting down with a whole bunch of guys that haven't really worked together from the your third and fourth team or so, it's, it's tough to get some continuity there, but it's still great experience for these players to be out in the field in front of a crowd here today. Chugging off, hands off to Jay Sean Banks. Banks wrapped up by a handful of defenders going nowhere. If you look at uh, number 61, I believe he's the left guard there. That's Zach Davis out of uh, Parkersburg, West Virginia. Another young man as well. That is making the difference. Well, would you look at that? Dana Holgerson decides to skip the final three minutes and 40 seconds. They have just called ball game here at the Cold Blue <laughs> Spring Game in Morgantown. The final score here will be 44 to 21. In fact, I think they'll maybe even tack on a few points because of that drive stop right there. That was a fourth down conversion that failed for WVU's goal team. Let's send it down now to Amanda Mazie and the head coach. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. All right, Dana, five weeks of practice in the book. Spring practice is over. Is this team where you want it to be right now? Yeah, it's where, I guess. I mean, there's no other way to look at it, but um, it's going to be a completely different team and, 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 and during this Virginia Tech game that I'm looking at here in the, the latter part of August. we got so many new people coming in May, coming in June, coming in July. i got 20 guys that are on the shelf right now that didn't, that didn't participate in this game, so it's going to be quite a bit different. Uh, I, I do wish we could play with uh, those guys that we played with that one play with Gino and, 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 and Kevin and, and, and uh, who was it, uh, uh, Shelton on the touchdown. Those guys were, uh, those guys were fun to, to see. I'm glad those guys came back. That's what this is all about. Do you have any surprises out of the spring that you weren't expecting? Good surprises? Oh, yeah, there's a couple of them. Um, I, the, the one that stands out to me on, on offense is Matt Jones, the center position. Orlowski's over here. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't even miss him. I mean, four-year starter, I don't even miss him because Matt Jones has stepped in. Uh, I knew David could be a great receiver for us. He's, he did what I was, uh, thought he would. Um, you know, and then defensively, the, the, the D-line just in general, we got a lot of bodies there. That, that's, that's, a, that's an area that we needed uh, to get better at, and I thought we did. What about your defense? I mean, obviously, you know, you have a lot of guys out here that are new, you have second stringers, and you said same same defense, you got the same scenario. You guys were just fine last year. What would you like to tweak on that side of the ball? Oh, we didn't even show anything really today. I mean, that, that, you know, we're Gibby's all about pressure and everything, and, and you know, that's, that's uh, we, we, we need to put those corners in more of those situations, obviously, because that's what we're going to do in a game. Uh, got new guys coming in. You know, it's going it's to be a, it's going to be a fun August to see what uh, those competition things uh, work out to be. All right. Well, thank you for your access all spring game, and we will be checking in with Tony Gibson very soon. We're back to you right now, Jeff. Well, thanks, Amanda. And hey, you know we don't always get to do this. The game's over. West Virginia won. Let's listen in. Country roads, one of the best traditions in college football.
fans get a chance to greet the Mountaineers all around the stadium. Let's go back to midfield where Amanda Macy has David Sills. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. David Sills, welcome back. How does it feel? Feels great to be back. Um, you know, the fans welcomed us um, to a great spring game. You know, the weather held out. It was a great experience. Uh, I'm happy to be back, very happy. We know that you left to try your hand one more time at quarterback. Are you happy in the wide receiver spot? And tell me how it is working with Will Greer. Uh, yes, absolutely. I think um, God opened the door for me to play wide receiver. Um, and I didn't want to, you know, wake up 25 years later and regret not giving my all at quarterback. So I went and did that. Um, you know, it didn't work out. And God opened this door for me. Coach Olgerson, um, you know, welcomed me back with open, open arms. And the rest of the team did as well. Um, and just working with Will, you know, he's, he's great. Um, that, that's really the only way you can describe him. Um, you know, he's a great quarterback, as we saw today, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of during the season. And, uh, you know, off the field, he's just as great as a person. So it, it's been awesome, and we're, we're ready to get after it this summer, too. You made some great catches out there. You seem pretty comfortable out there. Uh, yeah, you know, this spring was great for me. Uh, I feel uh, really comfortable out there, feel really comfortable with working with Coach Spav and uh, Coach Carrier. Um, you know, they've built, both been helping me very much, working on technique and everything. Uh, you know, I left two catches out there that, you know, can't happen during the season, but that's what the summer's for, and we can work on that and get better at it. All right, look forward to seeing you this season, David. You. Appreciate it. Jeff, back to you. Thanks, Amanda. And David Sills, last time he was with West Virginia at the receiver position, seven receptions, 131 yards, and two touchdowns in that 2015 football season. Good game for him today. Great connection with Will Greer and the man who was tasked all day with slowing West Virginia's offense. Fourth-year coordinator on the defensive side of the ball, Tony Gibson, now joining Amanda. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Here with the winning coach, you just pounced the offense. How'd that feel out there today? It felt good to see our kids get out and play. Uh, you know, been very competitive spring. I think our guys have done a good job of, you know, we had some guys, with some holes to fill. And we had guys step up and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with where we're at. Now we got to get some of these injured guys back and uh, head into fall camp, have a great summer. And, you know, expectations are high again. So, you know, I think our kids are ready for it. Spring game, a lot of fun, a lot of laughs, smiles, but this is serious. You guys are trying to figure out who's going to step in, especially on the defensive side of the ball, losing eight starters for the second year in a row. You, you, you plugged them in nicely last season. you got to turn around and do it again this season. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good and bad. You know, we, we see where we're at with our guys coming in. We have an idea of who we think is going to step up. And then to put them in a live game situation with people in the stands, it, you know, it's good for those kids. So uh, we have a lot of work to do. Uh, again, we have to have a great summer and, and get these guys ready to go and, and come fall camp. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to put, put a defense out there that everybody's happy with. Can you talk about the, the impact of your younger players and the, the new enrollees this spring? Yeah, Derek Pitts is probably the kid that had the most snaps uh, coming in from high school. Uh, yeah, and that puts him ahead. I mean, he's like a sophomore now, really, going through spring ball, getting all that meeting time and, and being able to get in and play meaningful snaps. He played a bunch with the ones today. And we did that on purpose to see, you know, how he's going to react, how he's going to hold up, playing against better competition. All right. Well, now you hit the recruiting trail, right? Yep. Recruiting for the next month and a half and, uh, and then get back and start this summer. Never stops. All right. Tony Gibson, thank you so much for joining us. Jeff, Wolf, back to you guys in the booth. There, Amanda. Now we have coming into our broadcast booth. We've got Jake Spavitzall who will be joining us to talk a little bit about the offensive side of the ball, the man going up against Tony Gibson, who, of course, was manning the defense today for West Virginia University. Jake, we're going to get you a microphone on here, but as we take a look, obviously, today, a lot of the eyes were on, were on Will Greer and the opportunity that he had at quarterback position. We're going to put you on headsets here. All right, we got you up now. Um, Jake, I just your work with Will Greer so far this spring and how you see it translate to what we saw today, what's it been like to get him as your latest quarterback? No, it's been good. You know, um, I'm pretty fortunate to be coaching guys like this. Um, you know, for what we did today, we were very base, very generic with what we were doing. I thought he went out there and executed and, and uh, he, he took care of the ball and, you know, he took some shots and showed his arm off. So um, I'm very pleased with how he competed today. You know, Dale and I had talked a good bit about the, the run pass option and the onus that you put on the quarterback that they are the ones who are making those de those decisions, whether it's pre-snap or based on what they're seeing from the defense. How much uh, do you put as, as far as responsibility on the quarterback to see it and then to react? 
I put a lot of pressure on him. I think that's something that's going to uh, – he's going to keep gaining confidence in, in terms of will um, just throughout the term, uh, through the summer and through fall camp, but just getting a lot of repetitions at it because I get him the freedom to, to call about five to seven things on the perimeter off of every single play, which, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, Coach – Gibby, you know, Gibby knows uh, all of our signals, all of our plays right now, so it's pretty fun to watch Will and him go at it in, in these scrimmages. But, uh, you know, again, it, a lot of people um, don't understand how much pressure we put on that guy. And, uh, you know, it, it's pretty awesome to watch him go out there and, and, and start to. Hey, you know, Jake, let's talk about RPO. Uh, run pass option. That's what I'm going to say in the whole time. RPO. And it's such a great thing. And then you get an opportunity. So, how much did you, RPO did you do today? Actually do it? I, I did a little bit. You know, not as much as I wanted to. Um, I started doing that a little bit more with Chugs with the twos because we were, we were moving so many bodies in and out of the game trying to get them reps and evaluations. But we were trying to throw it and, and just get it on the perimeter as much as possible. And of course, Gino comes in, which, you know, Gino, uh, he, he had a pretty good completion, one for one touchdown, which. Uh, this was pretty good. He had yeah. a nice play action fake, too. It, it was. He you know, sucked it, in the defense. It brought back some good memories right there. Yeah. I missed you, man. <laughs> I missed you, Gina. Hey, man, all the best to you. You're a giant now. Yes, sir. That's yes, huge, sir. man. Just love it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Miss you, guys. Miss you, man. Yeah. Thank you for coming back, as always, brother. <laughs> you know, the other thing, too, is looking at what was going on with Gibby there. You guys started out a little bit vanilla, but then all of a sudden some deep shots started coming. What was going on with that? Well, we, we came out and we decided that we were going to get the run game going and just try to get some pops with Crawford early in the game because we knew we were going to pull him out. Um, I let, let Will kind of take some shots, uh, or little quick game slants and everything to David Sills, and, and I, I was very impressed with him, by the way. But uh, once we were running out of time and Dana said we were limited with plays, I, I wanted to get some shots in with Will just to get some timing down. Yeah, Jeff, I'll tell you what, Jake Spavital, he's the guy that has all the great quarterbacks that he's coached. <laughs> he was born under a sign that said this young man when he was born will grow up and only coach awesome great quarterbacks. <laughs> and we've seen two of them today, Geno Smith exactly. and now Will Greer getting ready for the future of the program. Coach, thanks a lot today. Hey, appreciate it. All right, that will send it to a man amazing standing by with Tyron Carrier. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff, here with Coach Carrier. Coach, what did you think of David Sills, first of all? Uh, you know, he, he's great for us. Uh, you know, whenever you can get a, a quarterback to, to go out there and play receiver, uh, just pick up on everything. He's, he's everything we need. Uh, he can play multiple positions like he did today and uh, made some, some great plays. Talk about some of the other guys that you had out there and, and what impressed you most and, and who really stood out to you? Uh, you know, David Seals was a, was a standout guy. Uh, made some big plays. Uh, you know, Gary is, is just so consistent with everything he does. Um, Actually, Ricky Rogers came out and played well today. Uh, it was good to see Dom, uh, Dominique Maiden, and and um, and pads, and I mean, in, in a live situation, moving around and seeing how he competes, which was very good. Uh, it was Drew Bowen did well. Uh, Marenko, uh, Alejandro did well, uh, and, and Javon came out and played a little bit too. Wrapping up this spring practice, five weeks under your belt. Are you excited going into the season? Do you feel like you have a lot of weapons at your disposal? Yes, we got weapons now. It's just it's just getting everybody on the same page. Uh, as you can see today, we had a little, little miscommunication with certain things. Uh, it's just, you know, time. Time with a new quarterback and new system. It just takes a little time. What would you grade this team or this uh, game today? If you had to give it a grade, what would you give the, the receivers? A D. A D? You're tough. I give them Ds all the time. Hey, you got no place to go but up, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Coach, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you this season. Jeff? That's a harsh grader right there from Tyron <laughs> Carrier. Hey, Jeff Hosteller checking out the action today. Another great quarterback from the West Virginia University uh, alumni who have shown up here at the Gold Blue game. We've got more coming up right after the break as we put a bow on this 2017 Gold Blue game from here in Morgantown, West Virginia, inside Milan Pushkar Stadium.
turned out to be a beautiful afternoon here at Milan Pushkar Stadium for the 2017 Gold Blue Game. Our first look at this fall's edition of the Mountaineer football team. Hey, everybody, welcome back to our booth here in the end zone at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Jeff Coyle with Dale Wolfley. Dale, we had so many things that we wanted to see today. Some of them we did. Some of the questions we still will get answered over the summer and into fall camp. But what were your impressions today in particular talking about that new starting quarterback for West Virginia? Yeah, everybody wanted to see Will Greer, and I think he gave them what they wanted to see. Gave him a little bit of taste. The young man has talent. Everything has. He has the whole package. Let's take a look at the highlight right now. Will Early right here. Look at that quick release. And look at his footing there. His footing is right there. That means his arm is able to go. And look at that accuracy because he's hitting guys in stride, especially the slants. Look at this. Now he's making the right read down the field. Again, his shoulders are square. His footwork is good. Just getting into it. You know, he had to sit out that year, Jeff, of actually playing in the game, but he was on the scout team last year. And look at this last play here. Look at this throw. He's got a cannon. Ricky Rogers right in there. Ricky, get in the end zone. And so we're just getting the stats in. The day for Will Greer will officially go in the books as 12 of 18, 202 yards for West Virginia's quarterback. The lone uh, passing touchdown of the day from Geno Smith, of all people. You know what? Wouldn't you expect that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's to be expected for sure. And Geno, I loved having him come in right here. Again, he comes in, he jumps in, he says, hey, I love you guys, man, because I love being back here. That's a true Mountaineer. Yeah, and you know, throughout the day, not only Gino, but a number of other alumni from WVU football history were able to join Amanda Maisie on the field. So for her final thoughts, let's send it back out onto the field here in Morgantown. Amanda, great day here and a great chance for you to catch up with some of the best from WVU football. I'll tell you what, it sure was. It was so fun catching up with the former Mountaineers who are now in the NFL. And, of course, the Mountaineers that hope to be drafted coming up in a few weeks. A lot of them were on the sideline as well. The one thing that I'm going to take away from this game is even though – a lot of smiles, a lot of laughing. It, it was a fun kind of atmosphere. The players were taking this extremely seriously. I was on the sidelines for both sides, and if a play broke down, those guys, they were ticked off. Like, they just don't kind of shake it off. They were mad, and the coaches were quick to point out what you did wrong and what you need to do better next time. As much fun as the players had, they were definitely taking this seriously because some of them know that this is their shot to prove why they should be on the starting, you know, roster when it comes September, and, you know, we're in full swing of the season. So, I like how loose everybody was, but they were definitely taking this seriously, knowing that their shot was on the line today. Jeff? Yeah, thanks, Amanda. You know, that's really important to point out. Some of these guys want starting positions. Some of them want to be all Big 12. Some guys, Dale, they just want to make the travel team. They want to make sure that they are an important part of this program. Yeah, we got to say goodbye to Amanda. Amanda's got an important place to be right now, West Virginia baseball at 4 o'clock going up against TCU. Can I just say Maisie Ball? Maisie Ball. <laughs> Randy Maisie in charge of a team that is doing Four great clock. things on, right everybody. now in Morgantown. So Montegalli County Ballpark, that's the place to be right now. Head on over there. See West Virginia taking on the number two team in the country, the TCU Horn Frogs. And we've got tomorrow's series finale starting at noon. It'll be right here on this station. So don't change the channel. We'll be right back with more from the Gold Blue Game here in Morgantown. Smith. 